So we're in vector.com. I've shown you the shape tools and I've shown you the pen tool. So far, we've done everything with straights. I just, at the end of the last video, started showing you how you can turn those straights into curves by double clicking them. Okay. But the problem is when you have curves go into curves, you get bumps you don't like. So the answer to that is you hold down command and you're able to adjust the curves individually on each side. What I often do is just drag them all the way back to the base. So if I want to turn this into a curve, double click it, and it will average between the curve between the existing anchor points. If I want this to be a curve, double click it. And then if I want to adjust it, because it's a curve going into a curve, I hold down command and adjust that anchor point or that handle on the, on the curve. Double click. Adjust this one, maybe even just make it straight, right? So that this one averages, double click, and then I can maybe even extend this one so that curves a little bit stronger. Double click, take this one up, oh, missed it. Command, ah, double click. <laughs> So you see, as soon as you turn something, a straight anchor into a curve, you'll lose that, that cornering option of that circle. And that's handy because it shows you the difference between curves and non-curves. And you can still move the anchor point and that will move your curves with you. And if you want both curves again after getting rid of one, you can just double click and then double click again because double clicking will turn it back to a straight. You see that? And then double clicking will turn it back to average curves. So it's actually not hard to switch in between. It's hard to get the exact kind of curve you want. And then sometimes you just want to do it through cornering because it's the easiest way, using the straight point, but using the corners to smooth it out. So now let's look at that shape. I'm going to take the opacity up to 100, and then click off of it, and turn off my image. And that's almost right. It's just a little bit wonky right here, and this can often happen with vectors, and logos are the most specific. So I really want to control this curve. So that it's nice and smooth. Still a slight point to it. So maybe I just try it with cornering. Really taper that down. There we go. And then this one too. Let's just do it with cornering. This one too. Nope, liked it before. So I'm going to play with this handle and just adjust that curve. All right. Yeah. So now I've got a curved tiger's tail, which fits my sketch pretty well. So how would I do it with this wing? I double click it. And then I start either cornering and rounding out the straights, which also makes it so they're no longer uh, able to be cornered further. And that can do a lot. Often, that's a really good starting option. But as I get to the point of the flames, I want it to stay a sharp point. So it just goes straight into it and straight out of it. So often the best kind of vector design goes from straight corner, well positioned, to a curve.
you can add an anchor here and curve that. So I'm basically just going to try double clicking, turning to curves on every other anchor point. And sometimes that's all you need. But here I need to, yeah, average that curve out a little bit with the corner. Double click it. Corner that. Set that curve. And once you play with it, you'll get a sense of your, your tastes and how much you like to curve your shapes, what kind of curves you like. And you can always turn off your image and see the shapes you have. Oh, I haven't done around the ear yet, but it's getting there. I don't like the end of this. I was thinking I would keep it sharp, but I'm going to drop this one and then angle this anchor point out. Whoops. Remember you gotta double click and then click directly right on the anchor point in order to select it. Selections are incredibly finicky in vector programs. And then if I wanna just do one side, I can hold down Command. So there we go. Now, how do I do around the ear? Well, I'm just going to do the really basic approach. Double click for the corner to start like that. And then skip one and then double click to round it out. Skip one, double click to round it. And then I can use the cornering tools and the ones that stayed straight just to even it out a little. Not too bad. If you hold down shift while you're playing with the curves, it will keep them on the same axis, but you can shorten it on one end and lengthen it on another. If you do command, you can change the angles, which is a little bit da more dangerous than just using shift. Because the problem is getting curves going into curves. Okay. So that's what I'll show you in terms of turning straights into curves. I'm going to save my work. Very important. So how do we do that? Well, there is this arrow button. It says export. You're going to export it and you're going to save it not as a JPEG, not as a PNG. Those are raster formats, right? You're going to save it as a vector file. Ah, but they make that premium now. That's annoying. So that's the, the file format that's most supported within the program, but we can also save it as what's called a scalable vector graph. Oh no, no. Don't make me subscribe. They've changed it. Oh, that sucks. I hate that. <laughs> so I'm not going to say you can't save it. Instead, what you're going to do is this. There's a workaround because we do have Illustrator. But yes, ultimately, we are going to have to save this as a vector file. And if we're going to do that with something we don't have to pay for, I don't have a solution if this one no longer supports it. 
So we're going to do it through Illustrator, which you don't need to pay for because we're students. But we're going to design it here, and then we're going to do use Illustrator to do what's called image trace. So I'll show you that really quick in these last few minutes. So what I'm going to do is not export it. Instead, it's saved. It's a little dangerous, but it's saved right here. Remember, you logged in with an email, and no matter what computer you go to, vector.com, you log in with that email, it will remember your designs under your home and your designs, even though it just looks like it's black on black. That's because my designs are just black. But when we're done with everything, I'm going to turn off my sketch so I just have these floating black shapes, right? Let's pretend that was a finished la logo. And then I'm going to export them as a PNG. Let's see if it supports that. Oh my gosh. I guess as a JPEG, that will work. Okay. It does support that, but of course that has white in it. And then what we're going to take is that JPEG. Make sure I know where it downloaded to. Went to my downloads folder. And what we'll do, that is a big bummer. Capitalism, man. All right. So what we do is we open that JPEG up, which was made with vector tools. There it is with Adobe Illustrator, a program you have to pay for, but that we have access to. We only have to use it once, once we're all done with the freeware, to convert it into a vector. And we do that by a process called image tracing, and it's pretty straightforward. We shrink it onto the artboard, so it doesn't lose any proportions. We go to properties, and then we go to image trace, and then we're going to trace it as a black and white logo. We're going to go to the I was going to teach you this anyway, because it's very, very useful. We're going to go to the advanced options, and we're going to go to ignore the background color. So now it is just black shapes, no longer, even though it was a JPEG, no longer black on white. We look at it, and because it was created in a vector program as a vector, it's going to translate perfectly when I say expand into these vector shapes, which then out of Illustrator, because we've paid for it, we can save a copy as a vector format, which is SVG or save a copy EPS. These are both transferable vector formats or even save a copy as an Illustrator file, as an AI file. So I had played around with vector.com a little bit early in the semester to make sure major things hadn't changed, but I hadn't played with seeing that you can no longer export as a vector for free. I understand why they made that change, but it's unfortunate. So I'm going to bring all those vector formats here just so I remind you. But remember, all you need to do now is play with your sketch within vector.com and explore this link to the introductory tutorials for help. And maybe most helpfully, if you go to assignments, you can see the mentorship presentation from past students digital honors students right here where they talk about how to use vector.com to create a logo and they do it with a lot of the shape tools all right that's it so nice reminder if we look at our course outline we have one week before you are presenting your group presentations here within class time. So I'll make sure your groups all have links to post and share next class. We'll take some time to coordinate. But if you are missing group members, it'd be a good idea to reach out to them, make sure they're looking at their course outline to know that October 21st is when